From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Oakland teachers are set to be back on the picket lines this morning for day three of the school. Uh, of day three of the school. So I'm Justin Andrews, live reports coming up next. Pressure piling on San Francisco's DA this morning. Why community leaders and state lawmakers are calling for the release of a video of a deadly shooting at Walgreens. And this morning, Amanda will also take a look at the life of Bay Area baseball legend Vida Blue. The beloved pitcher died this weekend after a long battle with cancer. Me and Clay had a little miscommunication and transition. I was frustrated in the fact that I threw it because I saw the whole thing, you know, from start to finish. But uh, yeah, it's just a momentum play. All right, well, let's see if the Dubs can turn things around as they head into game four tonight in Los Angeles, down two games to one. Hear from the team on their confidence to tie this series up. And taking a look at the models this morning, we're about to warm up a lot as we head into this work week. About a 20 degree jump in certain areas. I'll let you know where on the map we're going to see that coming up in your first alert forecast. And as we take a look at the roadways, it's Monday. Your commute so far so good. We'll take a look at any hot spots coming right up. But first, talks continue today in Oakland as teachers prepare to strike this morning for the third day. Again, all Oakland Unified Schools will be open, but it will not be school as usual. Justin Andrews is live in Oakland for us this morning. Justin, the district says it's still hopeful that the deal can be reached soon. Yeah, Gianna, at least that's the plan. But keep in mind, the last day of school is just in about two weeks. And most families say they agree with the teachers, but they say the kids are the ones suffering in this. That's frustrating because I don't know who to believe on. And I'm sure the truth is somewhere in the, in the middle. <laughs> um, but it's challenging to try and thread that needle with all the different communication. All right, so we know the district has made some movement on compensation demands, giving every classroom teacher a 13 to 22 percent raise next year and a one time bonus. But the union says the district has not addressed their so-called common good items such as grant spending, housing for homeless students, mental health services, smaller class sizes and more. So actually, we're still pretty far away um, in a lot of other areas, but we believe that if, if we're able to continue to bargain, that we can make more and more movement. So again, we are committed to seeing through the full bargain and reaching a tentative agreement as quickly as possible. All right, so the district superintendent says that she agrees with the union's demands, but she was honest and says they just don't have the money to make sure all of their demands are met. Back to you, Gianna. All right, Justin, thank you for that report. Amanda. Let's look at our top stories now. California is one step closer to making reparation payments for black residents. The state task force meeting in Oakland on Saturday voted to approve its own recommendations. They include a formal apology from the state for slavery and potentially billions of dollars in payments to descendants of slaves who lived in California. The nine member task force will meet to discuss those recommendations again in that June be before sending them on to the state oh, legislature oh, for approval. Today, Congresswoman Katie Porter, who is running for the Senate, will host a meet and greet in San Francisco. She's among three House members vying to replace Senator Dianne Feinstein in next year's election. The others are Representatives Adam Schiff and Barbara Lee. As for Republicans, one hasn't been elected to the Senate here since Pete Wilson in 1988. A candlelight vigil happened last night in Sacramento to honor fallen law enforcement officers. State Attorney General Rob Bonta took the podium for a roll call. That will be followed by an enrollment ceremony later today. Nine names will be added to a series of bronze plaques on a display at a monument right across from the state capitol. Well, I hope you had a good weekend and we're looking at a new week. And mm -hmm. what are we looking at in the weather forecast? A gradual mm -hmm. warming trend throughout most of the week. And then it jumps just like that heading into the weekend. But last week you went flying. I and did. It was kind of hit or miss with the rain for you. It was weird flying last week. I will say that. I mean, overall, I was forecasting some active weather all week long, and then I ended up flying in it because I'm working on my instrument rating right now for airplanes, which 
basically means that you're flying through the clouds and through all this active weather and you're qualified to do so. I already do that anyways for the National Guard, but this is just for me to check it off so I can fly it also in fixed wing aircraft. So it was kind of fun for me actually, being able to forecast it in the morning at 3 a.m. and then 3 p.m. rolls around and here I am up in the sky dealing with all of those crazy hit or miss storms that we had last week. Now let's take a quick look at what's going on outside this morning all throughout the Bay Area. We're starting off pretty mild. Who's to complain, right? Especially on a Monday like today, but we have a really big warm up late this week. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second, but current temperatures in San Jose sitting at 48 degrees. It feels like 45 right now. And once we extend all the way off into Concord, a very similar trend. Low 50s right now. It's a mild, it's a little bit cool. Bring the jacket before you head out the door. Once we head into this afternoon, we're going to warm up into the low 60s just off in our inland areas. This is for our friends over in Santa Rosa. Mostly partly cloudy skies at times in the morning, and then that's going to be the trend heading into the afternoon. But the rain chances remain pretty much at zero. Yeah, we're drying up as we head into this week. And we're warming up too. It's not going to be noticeable as we kick off this work week, but by Friday, heading into Saturday, if you live anywhere near San Jose, even off into the Tri Valley area, oh, it'll feel different. I mean, we're talking about mid 60s today, we're talking about upper 80s just by Saturday. So quite the change right around the corner. We'll keep you updated on those numbers. And I'll show you where in each microclimate we're actually going to be seeing some of the warmest temperatures and whether or not it's record breaking. But for now, Gianna, how are the roads looking over there? You know, Jess, we are off to a pretty good start for a Monday morning. It's early. It's barely five o'clock. So that means traffic is pretty light overall. So if you're getting ready to get up early and head out the door and maybe make that trek across the Bay Bridge, it's not a trek at all. It's an easy ride as you head into San Francisco right now. Pretty quiet, no major delays or issues. There is a wind advisory though for the Benicia Bridge. So if you're taking that bridge this morning, keep that in mind as you cross the span. Golden Gate Bridge looks great. Everything pretty quiet out of Marin heading into San Francisco. Same for the San Mateo Bridge. We're off to a great start here as well. If you're headed westbound, safe from 880 all the way over to 101 over into Foster City. Light conditions there. If you're taking 101 either direction, but say if you're headed north, maybe towards SFO, things are pretty quiet there as well. Here are a look at our travel times for our Bay Area bridges, at least the ones that are most traveled for the morning commute quiet on the Richmond San Rafael Bridge as well as the Bay Bridge and the Carquinez Bridge looks pretty good also. All right, Jocelyn, we got a big game tonight. Game for the Warriors tonight. They will look to tie up the series against the Los Angeles Lakers after a blowout loss in game three. Turnovers were a problem for the Dubs 19 in game three. Clay Thompson had six of them. He called that inexcusable. He said, come today, he will be better. The other problem for the Dubs, well, Anthony Davis. So of course, I am here with Gianna. Look back at some of those plays. G, right here, I mean, if we talk about this, this was just early in the game in the first quarter with already just 10 minutes left. Look at that block from Anthony Davis. And nice. that was a lot of what we saw during the game. That was the biggest yeah. problem, too. And fast forward a little bit, you can look at Jordan Poole trying to get it done, too, yeah. against LeBron James. And he was on point, too. And yeah. I think this is the issue as well. We talked about with Anthony Davis being inconsistent. Yeah. He was on that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if we can go to that play next, but the one Hopefully that you were talking show, yeah. to. Yeah, but it, you saw blocks from LeBron James. You saw blocks from Anthony Davis. And unfortunately, that is just something that we saw right there, G. There it That's is. That's what we're talking about. LeBron James so and they know they struggled yeah I mean even Clay Thompson talked about how he had a hor horrible night yeah exactly no he did he called that inexcusable as far as his turnovers well Steph Curry talked a little bit on this when we talk about looking into game four last night was a lot of self-inflicted wounds um, across the board and um, you hate that you had to keep learning that lesson at this stage of the season but we did and now it's about how we uh, how we respond. It's been our MO for a very long time, and like I said, it's a lot, there's a lot of confidence in that. No matter how frustrated we are, that we let let it let it slip. All right, gotta well, bounce back. Gotta bounce back, and Steph Curry has been saying it quite a bit. After they lose, they'll make the adjustments. They will make the adjustments. Hopefully, we get that win. G game four tonight, Los Angeles. I'm nervous about it. Yeah, I don't like to be nervous. I felt very confident for game three. She told me they were gonna win. I'm going to say that every single time. Amanda, they, she told me they were going to win. I'm never not going to say they otherwise, Amanda. They're always, <laughs> I'm just going to always keep that. I'm just going to sit here in the middle of this and let you guys <laughs> battle that one out. 